Welcome to our lecture online, and this lecture is going to still be on interference of light. But in this case, we're going to do the, what we call the general case. Whenever we have two rays that come together, they're from two different sources, but that put out the exact same intensity of light and same wavelength light. But if the one ray has to travel a greater distance than the other ray, there's going to be a path-like difference between the two rays, and so we call that the extra distance traveled by one ray compared to the other ray. And that means when they arrive at the same spot, the difference is usually a fraction of a wavelength difference. Now, of course, it could be many wavelengths plus a fraction, but let's just take the case where the difference is just somewhere between zero wavelengths and a whole wavelength, so a fraction of a wavelength. So we use the letter F to indicate a fraction of a wavelength difference. So what does that mean then when the light comes together? What happens at that, at that point? Well, there's going to be interference and it's either going to be constructive or destructive interference or some combination of the two. In other words, neither completely destructive or completely constructive interference. And so in the general case, we're going to assume it's neither, it's somewhere in between. So we want to now figure out, <coughs> excuse me, what is going to be the intensity of the light when the two rays come together. And so what we're doing here is we assume, of course, that every electromagnetic wave has an electric field oscillation, a magnetic field oscillation, and so we then represent E1 and 2 as the magnitudes of the oscillation of the two rays, or the average magnitude is probably more likely. And we can then see that there's going to be a phase difference between the first ray and the second ray, and let's call the phase difference uh, beta. That's uh, an angle beta. And of course, the phase difference is then going to be equal to some fraction of 2 pi, somewhere between 0 and 2 pi, or 0 and 360 degrees, but of course, we like to do it in radians. And so to find that fraction, we take 2 pi divided by the wavelength and then multiply it times the extra distance, which we said was going to be a fraction of the wavelength. And so the fraction of the wavelength divided by the wavelength times 2 pi gives us the fraction of 2 pi for the phase difference. All right, now, how do we add those two together? Well, again, let's take this right here. So we have the, um, matter of fact, I can take what I have right here and let me move this E2 put it in a slightly different place, okay? And now let's say that this here would be the vector sum of the two individual magnitudes of the electromagnetic field oscillations or the electric field oscillations. And so this would then be considered E total. And of course, it's going to be a vector sum because these are phasors and we have to add them like vectors. If we now draw a perpendicular line from the E total down to where the two meet right there, and then I can call this portion of the E total, let's just call it E sub x to make it simple. And if I want to find the magnitude of E sub x, I realize that this is a right angle. And then this angle right here is going to be half beta right there. So this angle here is going to be beta over 2. And now that I have a right angle triangle, I can figure out what E sub x is in terms of E sub 1. And so since this is the adjacent side to the angle, I can say that E sub x, the magnitude of E sub x, is equal to the hypotenuse E sub 1 times the cosine of the angle, which is going to be beta over 2. And then I can see that I can do the same on this side, and that is also E sub x. And you can see that the magnitude of E sub x here is going to be the same as the magnitude of E sub x there. So therefore, we can see that E total, the magnitude of the total electrofield oscillation of the two ways together is going to be equal to 2 times E sub x, which is going to be 2 times E times the cosine of beta over 2. All right, so that is now going to be the amplitude of the electric field oscillations when the two ways come together. Now, let's say that there's no phase difference at all, and the phase difference therefore is 0 degrees, and the cosine of 0 degrees is 1, and then E total will simply be twice the uh, electric field oscillation magnitude of each individual phase. But if there's a phase angle, then of course you can see it's going to be somewhat less. Now what if beta was, for example, 180 degrees? Then of course this folds completely up onto itself, then the sum of the two would be equal to zero, and of course the, um, the uh, cosine of, well, beta divided by 2, so if beta is 180 degrees, then beta divided by 2 would be 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, and of course there you can see that the amplitude would be 0, it would be completely cancelled out. But here we're trying to do the general case where the angle is somewhere between 0 and 180 degrees. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is find out what the intensity is going to be at this particular location. 
And you know that the intensity, by definition, is equal to 1 over mu sub naught times C times the electric field oscillation squared, and that would be for any intensity for any wave. Now, of course, if we do it for the two waves put together, then the intensity total for the two waves would be equal to 1 over mu sub naught C times E total squared. And of course, the E total squared comes from over here. We need to use this E total. So we're going to plug this in for here. So it's twice E sub X, which is twice E times the cosine of beta over 2. Now, what is this E right here? Well, this E is actually E1 or E2. And since they're of equal magnitude, because they came from similar sources, we can say that E1, the magnitude of E1, equals the magnitude of E2. And let's call that the magnitude of E sub 0, just to say that's your standard magnitude for each individual contributing wave. So we're going to call this E sub 0, E sub 0 to make it a little bit more clear. So when we plug that in here, we get 1 over mu sub naught C times, and instead of E total, I'm going to plug in this right here, would be 2 times E sub naught times the cosine of beta over 2. All right, and of course, that is squared. Then if we multiply that, we get this is equal to 1 over mu sub naught c times 4 e sub naught times the cosine squared of beta over 2. All right, now the e sub naught, of course, is your original e sub naught. The e sub naught, the electric, the electric field oscillation of each individual phase. And if we then write this here as i sub naught is equal to 1 over mu sub naught c times E sub naught squared. So this is the intensity of each individual beam by itself. If we then look at that and we look at this, we can say that this portion right here and this portion, now let me get a different color so I can indicate that. So this portion right here and this portion right here is what we have over here. Of course, oh, I have to square that. Don't forget to square. That needs to be squared as well right there. And I can say that this times this is simply the intensity of an, individu of an individual beam. So this would be equal to um, 4 times I sub naught times the cosine squared of beta over 2. Mm, strange looking beta. But this now would be the intensity of any two beams come together that have some sort of phase difference beta. Beta would be a fraction of a wavelength, or I should say a fraction of 360 degrees or 2 pi. And then you can see that the total intensity of the two beams come together would be four times the intensity of a single beam, then of course times the cosine square of beta over two over beta over two, where beta is simply the phase difference between any two rays. And that's then the general case of how you figure out the intensity of any two beams of light coming together that have of course the same source, same type of source with the same intensity, same wavelength, same frequency of, of uh, light. And that's how you do a problem like that.